Okay, so we have been learning how to find slope between two points on a graph. So we use like the stair step method or the rise over run. So you counted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven as a rise and one, two, three, four, five, six. Let me try it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which gave me a rise and a run of one over one. Okay, so you've learned how to do this by counting boxes. Now we're going to learn uh, the slope formula. Slope formula is exactly what we just did. It's, it's still counting boxes. So I'm looking at 2 here and 5 here, which I would get that if you look at my 5 and my negative 2. So this is where it comes from. It comes from the change in the y over the change in the x. So thinking of that, I'm going to move it over here. So the slope formula it's still rise over run some uh, refer to it as the change in y over the change in x And it is from using those two points. M is what we use for slope. Don't ask me why, just what it is. So small m is for slope. Make sure you are not using a capital M because capital M will stand for midpoint later on. And when we have two points, let's go back to the negative three, negative two, and the four, five ordered pairs, the sub numbers that you are going to see in the formula are just to be able to tell the difference between this ordered pair and this ordered pair. So I'm going to label this one um, as x sub 1, y sub 1, and this is x sub 2 and y sub 2. Notice those little teeny numbers are down below. As soon as they start floating up to the top, that's when they become exponents and we don't want that to happen. Okay, so we are going to use Depending on the teacher, you might see it two different ways. Um, a lot of times you'll see it as y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. And honestly, it doesn't make any difference as long as you are consistent. If you were to put the um, sub 1 numbers first, you just have to be consistent. So negative 2 minus 5. over negative 3 minus 4. And that would give me negative 7 over negative 7. Negative divided by negative is a positive, and we reduce that to 1 over 1, which is what we did when we counted the boxes. So if I do it the other way and go 5 minus and go my y sub 2's first, it's still going to end up being the same. 5 minus as part of the formula a negative 2 over 4 minus as part of the formula a negative 3. Remember that minus a negative is plus a positive. And we're right back to 7 over 7, which gives you 1 over 1. So let's do a couple more examples. I'm going to leave this as example 2. Um, I'm going to give you the point of 4, 2, and another point of 4, negative 6. See how that turns out. So slope, actually I'm going to get in the habit of labeling these with my sub numbers first. Remember, ordered pairs are always x, comma, y, so make sure you're not putting both the x's in one ordered pair and then both the y's in another ordered pair. Change in y. So it's 2 minus a negative 6 over 4 minus 4. Minus a negative is plus a positive. Gives me 8 over 0. And we have learned that that means that these are undefined. So if I were to graph this line, I'm going to end up with a vertical line. So 4, 2. 
and 4, negative 6 is going to give me that vertical line so it does have an undefined slope. Let's do another one, example 3. Uh, let's do the order pairs of 5 and 7 and negative 3 and 7. Oopsie. Negative 3 and 7. So again, using the slope formula, x sub 1, y sub 1, and x sub 2, y sub 2, 7 minus 7 over 5 minus a negative 3, 7 minus 7 is 0, negative, or excuse me, minus a negative is plus a positive, and that gives me 8, so 0 over 8 gives me a 0 slope. So if I were to graph this, 5, 7, and negative 3, 7, I am going to end up with a horizontal line. Another way to remember this is that if this is a horizontal, okay, horizontal lines have a zero slope, so those O's look an awful lot like zeros. So horizontal lines have a zero slope. And vertical lines have an undefined Okay, so that should get you going using the slope formula. And using the slope formula, it is nice to be able to check it by counting boxes, but if I give you two ordered pairs, you're not going to want to graph those every time and then turn around and then count the boxes, especially if I give you some huge ordered pairs of like negative 17, 110, and another ordered pair of 212 and negative 13. Okay, so using the slope formula is a good shortcut, if you will, for finding slope of a line.